Hey, this is Margaret Lynch from margaretmlynch.com, creator of the Tapping into Wealth Coach Training Program. Um, in this video, I'm doing a series around doing some deeper personal development work for all of you coaches out there or seekers out there, whether you're a coach yet or not, or a healer or a therapist. I really want to do a series around talking about transformation. And this part of the series is about forgiveness, right? And about self-forgiveness. And in the last video, you can still see here on my Facebook page or on my YouTube page, um, what I talked about the four levels of forgiveness, and that's a really important video. You can check that one out too. And of course, you can subscribe to my videos to make sure you always get them. But in this video, I want to talk about the um, how, what's the mind's role, right? What is the role of the mind when it comes to forgiveness and why the mind really can't forgive? It's not really the job of the mind to forgive. And the downside of forgiving too Quickly, yes, that may sound strange because we talk about forgiveness as something that you should do and something healthy, but it's actually not good to forgive too quickly. So first of all, um, when you look at our consciousness, we are often identified more with our mind than with our other six levels of consciousness. And one of the things I love about the chakras and the chakra system, which is says that we have seven energy centers, is that it's actually seven levels of consciousness, not just one. Our mind is one level of our consciousness, and we have six others that represent the full expression of who we are, right? And what happens is that the mind is often taken over and running most of who we are in our life and our identity and even like what our life purpose is. And it can even get involved and take over things like forgiveness. And so I talked about in the four levels of forgiveness that the first kind of forgiveness is really the kind of forgiveness uh, that, that, help, that time heals and we start to get perspective. And certainly when things aren't that big and traumatic and maybe they're short-lived things, it's easier for us to just sort of shift and not have it affect us that much and feel like, you know, that doesn't really bother me anymore. And that is a truer statement of forgiveness more than, um, you know, I let that go, that forgave me. I forgave that. It's more saying like when I look back at it, it just doesn't feel that important. It's not even something I need to forgive, right? It's like it's beyond forgiveness. There's nothing to forgive. It just doesn't mean that much to me and who I am now. But that first level of forgiveness can be more about perspective and when it's something that is actually really painful and actually had a really big cost to it, then it's difficult to forgive with all of our system because we don't really have ways and containers of doing that before the advent of these mind-body techniques like energy psychology. And of course, there's lots of body-centered techniques out there that aren't as famous and popular, but the average way that people try to do forgiveness is by talking about it and then trying to let it go and move on and heal and forgive. But most of that is taking place in our thinking, right? So we often bring a lot of our thinking to this and we can often think a lot of circles around things. It's like, well, but I have perspective, but part of me understands that that, that person was doing their best and that was where it was and this is what happened. And that is the gift of the mind, is that seeing the bigger picture and seeing perspective. The problem with it is, is that when there was real hurt and when there was real pain, it's not the mind's job to help heal real hurt and real pain. Um, it's a different part of our energy system, right? It's our, it's our heart. It's our core. It's our first chakra, second chakra, third chakra in the, in the chakra system. Wounding happens in what we call the lower self in this, typically in these kind of situations. And so the mind can try to wrap around it and get to forgiveness. And you'll hear people say, they'll talk about something in the past and they'll say, but I've let that go. I forgave that. It doesn't bother me anymore. And you can clearly hear and feel in them that that's, there's not really a completeness to letting it go. They might be saying the words and doing their best, but that it's still affecting them. And here's the thing. There is a huge downside to trying to get yourself into forgiveness too quickly. Why? Because when we have something happen to us that causes 
real pain and real hurt and real loss, which means because of it, we lost something or we have the feeling that we lost something. And sometimes I'll say to people, what did you lose? And they might be like, I lost this, I lost money, I lost um, you know, other things in my life. But when it comes down to it, there's always something very near and dear in, within them that also was affected. They'll say, I lost myself that day, or I lost my trust, or ever since that day I doubt myself, or I don't trust people, right? Or I lost my faith in God and the universe and the divine that day. And so if you try to use your mind to leapfrog over some of the true intense emotions and the um, like sort of the recounting, the, the energetic recounting of what you have lost, then you're going to just you be using like your mind to get perspective and it won't truly be forgiveness. And my problem with that is, is that instead of working on that event in a way that is more healing for you, we say, I put that in a bucket, I forgave it when really there's still pain in the system around it. And so when we actually go in and do healing work, particularly using something like tapping or energy psychology, what we actually do is not take our mind and say, I'm just gonna have perspective. We do that at some point, but we start by voicing what we really lost. And when we voice things, not just tell it to our friends over and over, when we voice things while tapping, while using a mind-body tool, we allow the emotion to move, the grief, the sadness. And it's like having your day in court. So imagine trying to forgive someone that hurt you really badly and they're not even sorry, right? And they don't even get it and no one's really ever heard or validated why you feel so hurt and what you've actually lost, what it's, co what it's cost you. It's really hard to do that and it doesn't really seem fair to me because it doesn't honor you in the hurt that you had, right? And so in using a technique where you can guide your client into voicing and you're helping your client by asking them questions, voicing everything they lost and then the worst thing of all that they lost and the sadness and the grief and the disappointment and the shock and all of that pain can, allows for a deeper movement and honoring of what happened in the past event so that the energy can release, can heal, and now you will have a client sitting in front of you that will have a sense of calmness, a sense of healing, and from there, they get a new perspective. And it's not just from up here, like a mental gymnastics trying to get to a perspective. Their heart is open, right? They have compassion, the energy system is calmer, they're, they're not feeling all this grief and sadness and frustration and anger. They feel calm and centered, and from that space, with their heart open, they have the wisdom to look back at the last event, at the old event, and start to say, you know, it's just not that important. It just doesn't resonate with me anymore. It doesn't trigger me anymore. And that is how you get somebody to a truer level of healing that actually honors them, honors their pain, honors their loss, lets it be voiced and heard and validated by themselves and maybe by you as the coach or healer or therapist. And I'm telling you, the healing that you get on the other side of that kind of forgiveness work is beyond anything they will have ever done. So my tip today or my, my um, challenge to you coaches and healers and therapists is be willing to, to do the courageous thing with your client and actually go there and allow them to heal and voice some of the, the, the deep pain and emotional suffering and frustration and loss and know that when that is voiced and moved and honored enough, you will have a client that moves to a much um, deeper, more profound state of healing, transformational forgiveness 
than they could get with just the mental gymnastics alone. So this is Margaret Lynch. Happy Friday. And um, you can always visit me at margaretmlynch.com and see what I'm up to there. And of course, I'll be speaking about this forgiveness topic and the four levels of forgiveness and how it relates to radical transformation in a couple of weeks at the Omega Institute. You can Google the Omega Institute and see the workshop that we're doing there, the Energy Psychology Workshop. I'm one of the keynote speakers. Um, and I'll continue to talk about it here on Facebook Live in this transformational series or whatever I'm calling it. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.